Labour will now have a majority over all parties in a House of 640. It was sensational. Three weeks ago or more, when you recorded your votes, very few of you would have prophesied a working majority for Labour, much less one of about 200 seats. How did it happen? Was it the forces vote? Rumour had had it that the men and women of the services favoured Labour, but no one knew, the ballot being secret, overseas no less than in Britain itself. After polling day, Mr Churchill went away to paint in the south of France. He had fought a strenuous campaign and he took a well-deserved holiday before meeting President Truman and Marshal Stalin in Berlin. At the conference, in contrast to Marshal Stalin, who knew exactly where he stood, Mr Churchill had always the anxiety of an uncertain election at the back of his mind. Not that that affected his customary skill as a negotiator, but obviously it can't have been easy. He was, of course, accompanied by Mr Eden and Mr Attlee. It was a prudent thought, as it turns out, that Mr Attlee should have doubled up on Mr Churchill throughout the early stages of the conference. At the same time, it's a happy thought that Mr Churchill should have had the satisfaction of reviewing the British Army's victory parade in Berlin. There is this poetic justice in the secret of the polls being delayed for three weeks, that it enabled Winston Churchill to crown his war achievements by a review in Berlin itself. And there can be no two views about him as a war leader, or any doubt that he is one of the great men of history. With the 26th of July approaching, Mr Churchill returned to England. The egg which the electorate had laid three weeks earlier was about to be hatched, and he came back to learn whether it was rotten, good or only good in parts. Mr Attlee came back too, and he was greeted by his daughter Felicity at the aerodrome. That day they were mixing the votes. Next day, July the 26th, they counted them. The scene is Paddington Town Hall, Mr Brendan Bracken in the background. Mr Bracken was one of the first casualties of the government. When the result for North Paddington was declared, it read, General Mason Macfarlane wins Labour game. Stepney was another early declaration. Here, in the Limehouse Division, it was no change, and Mr Attlee expressed his thanks. The rest of the country will do as well as the borough of Stepney. The country will have done very well for itself. Gradually, it began to be clear that the rest of the country was doing a step. <laughs> Newspapers carried the astonishing news to an amazed public. For, let's face it, whoever imagined such a result? And slowly, the moral of it all struck home. Labour landslide. Here is the state of parties up to three o'clock in detail. Conservatives, 180. Labour, 364. At Woodford, Mr Churchill was declared elected, Mrs Churchill representing him, for he had planned to hear the results from headquarters. And what he heard in his own case was a 17,000 majority. That perhaps was poor consolation. But no doubt Winston Churchill can take it. There will be universal regret that the gifts of so brilliant a statesman will be forfeited by this election. And this regret will be shared, despite hard words, by his opponents. At East Lewisham, Mr Herbert Morrison was elected and gave his interpretation of the result. I personally have always thought that there was no necessary antagonism between Labour and what are known as the middle classes. East Lewisham is a mixed division of working class folk 
and middle class folk. And we have shown here, as will be shown in other places, that the middle classes need not necessarily be antagonistic to labor. The news is that there is a big swing to the left throughout London and probably throughout the country in this election. And outside Transport House, the headquarters of the Labour Party, Mr Attlee summed up for Movietone the situation as it appeared to a man about to be Prime Minister. The Labour Party's great victory shows that the country is ready for a new policy to face new world conditions. That it believes that Labour has the right policy and also has the men to carry it out. <laughs>